before we go ahead and jump into today's show with a ton of stuff regarding the National Football League and, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, I concluded an incredible interview with 49ers reporter Grant Cohn, which is going to go live on my channel probably 5 p.m. Eastern time tonight. So subscribe, thumbs up, and stay tuned for that really good interview with Grant Cohn. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Thursday. The week is flying by. We're getting closer and closer to Eagles versus 49ers. There's a lot of stuff to go ahead and jump into regarding both that football game and some other interesting NFL hot takes regarding Daniel Jones, Jalen Hurts, and the quarterbacks remaining in the NFL playoffs. First, though, I do want to mention, a little bit later on in the show, I will get to the Vontae Maddox update, but just if you're just clicking because of that, you guys understand Avante Maddox did practice yesterday. He practiced again today. Looks like he's going to play more on that in just a little bit. Let's start, though, with our good buddy Chris Sims. Now, you've already heard from Chris Sims over the past couple of months because Chris Sims has been one of the most vocal, I'd say, uh, proponents of Jalen Hurts. Extremely critical of Jalen Hurts. And just when you think Chris Sims finally learned his lesson because Jalen Hurts keeps winning, looked fantastic in a playoff game despite a hurt shoulder, he went on his Chris Sims show and said this. We're going to listen to it. It's unbelievable that Chris Sims continues to double down, triple down, quadruple down on the narrative that Jalen Hurts is no good. Here's Chris Sims saying Daniel Jones is still, after losing to him this weekend, a better passer than Jalen Hurts. Take, take a listen. If you were to switch the quarterbacks, would the result be different? Right? And I think you, I think it's kind of interesting. You could do that for all the games. I don't know if any of the games would be different but for this one specifically like Daniel Jones now is under fire Giants fans is he the guy is he not the guy is can we win with him if he was playing for the Eagles and if Jalen Hurts was playing for the Giants I mean I, how much do the Eagles win by I 20 what? still well, uh, yeah 30? I don't think might it's be a, closer I don't think it's a whole lot different because Daniel Jones is gonna be able to do the same thing I mean he can do some of the things that Jalen Hurts yeah maybe not as good a runner but we know he's really close it's not like oh whoa way better Again, if you're going to ask me who I'd rather have as a passer, I'd rather have Daniel Jones. I, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. I'm probably you're going to get me in trouble today. And this is not, but this. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. You know, but, it's just to speak more to the quality of the teams, that, right? That, that's, that's and stating the obvious. For real, well, here, I, right? what we're trying to say is, what the hell are you talking about, Giant? Okay, now a couple of things there. First off, the outrageous statement that Daniel Jones is a better passer is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. The guy had less than 20 touchdown passes this year. I think he had 15 in 16 or 17 games. Don't quote me on that. That's just coming off the top of my head. He's trying to basically say, right, the, the, the host of the show, I have no idea who, who the host of the show is on the left, is trying to say, hey, Giants fans, Daniel Jones is good. He needs weapons around him. Now, that's, that's a fine argument, sure. But Chris Sims then says he's a better passer than Jalen Hurts. Oh, my goodness. And this is not from a couple of months ago. This is literally after Philadelphia won 38-7 to Saturday night against the New York Giants where Jalen Hurts threw two touchdown passes and ran for another one. Jalen Hurts has went from a really good running quarterback who couldn't throw last year to a really good running quarterback who is an even better thrower this year. <laughs> It's just, oh, it just, it's so funny, man. And then Chris Sims always whines whenever he gets ripped by photo of the Eagle fans. It's statements like this that make us upset and rip you. Do you not understand? It's not that hard. Now, not to be outdone, let's just spin over here to the Carlton show. And I, I actually, uh, or Carlton, excuse me, this is the new morning show on FS1. I have not watched a lot of this show. It's, it's really... I don't know. It's not my favorite. Let's just say that. He went ahead and ranked the top four re re remaining quarterbacks. Left alive in, in the playoffs. Now, the tweet already shows you where what he thinks of Jalen Hurts. Let's listen to what he said. I got to fast forward a little bit, though. Top four quarterbacks uh -huh. left in the postseason. Okay. Oh, we're going to go one to four again, okay, guys? Yes, All not. right. Number one. I think it's very obvious. The number one quarterback in the playoffs, no disrespect, don't take it personally, is Patrick Mahomes. Okay, we're going to skip to where he talks about Jalen Hurts because obviously he says Patrick Mahomes is the number one quarterback. Two is Joe Burrow. You can make that argument. Sure, that's fine. Now let's get into where he goes at number three. Just fast forward a little bit here because three and four, remember, the remaining ones are Jalen Hurts and Brock Purdy. Here's what he says. Brock! No! 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 Yeah! Why? Because he's got double the amount of playoff wins as Jalen Hurts. So what? He don't throw for 150 yards in a playoff game. Jalen Hurts is the Michael Jordan of quarterbacks. We learned that yesterday. <laughs> You're going to put Purdy in front of Michael you Jordan? silly rabbit. Tricks are made for kids. Brock Purdy, three. Jalen Hurts, of course, 
becomes number four. And again, no. that is not a slight. It is. That's not trolling. It is. There's only four left. So you're right there, as good as just about anybody not named Purdy, Burrow, or Mahomes. So he doesn't give any reasoning why he put Jalen Hurts at number four. He says that Brock Purdy has doubled the amount of playoff wins because he's won two this year versus Jalen Hurts. Come on. Come on. I mean, what, what do you want me to say about this? It's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Now, it's obviously a major media sports talk show, and they have to make you click on it for some reason. They have to make you talk about it for some reason. This got 580,000 views, and that is exactly why. The quote tweets, 358 versus 211 likes. That's also funny that this thing got 1.1 million views and yet only 211 likes. Eh, come on, that's kind of how tech works these days. But again... I don't have to ask you to comment down below to tell me how many ridiculous, how ridiculous this is. It's just funny, right? It's just funny, and we'll see after Sunday, and it'll be fun to see how these people, Chris Sims, Craig Carton, and the rest of the Jalen Hurts haters out there, try and still, uh, you know, slight him, despite the fact he might go to a Super Bowl with a win on Sunday. Unbelievable. Thumbs up for how stupid those two takes were. It's so dumb because it's not like any sort of news or actual reporting like I like to try to do on the Thomas Mott Show, but you see these things on Twitter, and it's just... Oh my goodness, it's so dumb. You know what's not dumb? The FanDuel promo that is still going on right now where you guys can get $5 or bet $5 and get a guaranteed $150 in bonus bets regardless of if your bet wins or loses because of the new customer playoff promo right now. A lot of you guys are asking me, Thomas, how long will this run? I don't know. I think it's going to run until the end of the playoffs. It might go to the Super Bowl, but if not, this might mean it's your last week to jump in on this deal. Bet $5, get back $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. All the info is in the uh, is at the website. The link is down below in the description box right now. Okay, as mentioned, I'll give you a quick injury update here. A lot of people already covered this on Twitter and on various platforms. But, yes, Avante Maddox was limited but did practice yesterday, according to Philadelphia. The only two players who were limited participants were Avante Maddox and Lane Johnson. This is really, really good news. It does mean that Maddox has a really good chance of playing. Now, I want to be very, very clear. CJ Garner Johnson has been fine in, in the slot. you got to make sure that if you're going to play Avante Maddox, he's as healthy as possible. He doesn't have to be 100%. But if he's ever manned up one-on-one -on -one against Debo Samuel, I want to make sure he can actually do the job and cover very well. Now, if he's back and healthy, fantastic, because he's a lot better than, you know, a couple of the other slot players that they've uh, they've thrown in there. But I'm very curious to see how he is in terms of tomorrow's practice, the final injury report on Saturday, and how much he can actually play on Sunday. But really good news there. A.J. Brown talked about this two days ago, not listed on the injury report despite getting nicked up in the divisional round. That's good news for a fourth Philadelphia. And Jalen Hurts was asked about his shoulder, and he said, quote, I felt better, but it really doesn't matter. Got to get it done. So probably still dealing with it, but not like he's going to actually showcase that he's injured or complain about it as well. In terms of the, of the 49ers injury report, Garoppolo with a foot, he's not playing. Still seeing Chris McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell both not uh, practicing yesterday with a calf and a groin injury. They'll play, but we'll keep an eye on that. Trent Williams was limited with the rest. Charles O'Menohue was back at practice despite the domestic violence allegations we talked about on the show yesterday. It looks like they're going to try to let him play and then let the legal process figure itself out afterwards. So uh, a note on that. But good news for Philadelphia. Thumbs up. Maddox is back. Everyone's healthy. That is really good news for everyone involved. Okay, final little bit, a uh, little nugget here. This is this is good fun. Okay, this is Debo Samuel um, being asked about the atmosphere at the link, which I will be at on Sunday. I do have a ticket at Lincoln Financial Field. Very excited for the NFC title game. And Debo, he's not slighting Eagle fans, but he's at least trying to shrug off the idea that Philly is going to be loud on Sunday. Which, trust me, it one hundred percent is. Here's Debo. We know we know it's going to be loud. Uh... You know, um, but no stadium is as loud as ours. But at the end of the day, you know, they're at home, NFC Championship, they're going to be all riled up. And, you know, it don't, it don't really too much. We don't really too, too much feed into all that. You know, we put the pads on and just go to work. Okay, now that's a fine, you know, if he, he's not saying Eagle fans are stupid or we're not going to be that loud. He's saying it's going to be loud, but then he says no stadium is as loud as ours. Levi Stadium, trust me, it's absolutely not that loud. I actually asked Grant Cohn about this in the interview I, I went ahead and already recorded. That's going live tonight. Listen for his answer. What's interesting, though, and Grant mentioned this, Brock Purdy, for as great as he has been, has not really had a true road test. I mean, truly, he's not had a true road test at all basically since he took over as the 49ers starter. So past two weeks, right, obviously two home games for the 49ers, Cowboys and Seahawks, so no worry about travel there or loud crowds. Cardinals was a home game. The Raiders on the road, the Raiders are basically a home game for whatever team is visiting them, especially the well-traveled 49ers. That's, and they barely won, by the way, but that was the last road game he played the past couple of weeks. 
Washington was a home game. Seattle is the only true road game. That's it. The only true road game that Brock Purdy has played in his entire career because his first start was the Bucks game. So we talk about loud crowds. We talk about traveling. We talk about how, oh, San Francisco is not worried about the crowd. Trust me. I said, I said this on the interview that you're going to see tonight. Philadelphia crowd in a playoff game, very different than a home game. Philadelphia is not the loudest stadium in the NFL during the regular season. That's fine. There are a lot of other very loud stadiums, Arrowhead, uh, Caesars uh, Dome, or whatever they call it down in New Orleans whenever they're good. In the playoffs, it's a different story. In the NFC title game, it's a different story. The atmosphere the Vikings had to come into and play just a couple of years ago in 2017 cannot be understated. People I talked to who were at that game said it was the craziest fan experience ever. I expect the same to happen on Sunday when Philadelphia has a chance to show Brock Purdy what it's really like to be on the road in the National Football League in a must-win game. Okay, again, Grant Cohen interview going live a little bit later on tonight. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up for that. And we're, what, three days away? Show tomorrow, show Saturday, and then I got to get on a flight Sunday morning to go to the game. We might do a pregame show and a postgame show, so stay tuned for that. That's it, though. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.